great learners at home, I remain Mrs. Uluyemisi Walishuge. As a result of the foregoing, I want to believe that you have been able to learn how to apply the if clause types one, two, and three to effective usage thenceforth. They all differ one from another in their usages. While type one is also called the likely condition, type two goes as the an unlikely condition. Today, we shall delve into seeing how uh, the second or unlikely condition relates with the subjunctive mood. Mood in grammar means quality or form of a verb that indicates the writer's attitude towards his word contents. Mood has nothing to do with the frame of mind, but means mood, especially when a speaker's intention is stated as a possibility, hope, wish, fact, order, and opinion. So it can be one imperative issues commands at times with you implied example at five o'clock wash the tomatoes for dinner two indicative expresses fact example she travels to Ibadan every August. The mood can be interrogative, and that is number three. That means ask questions. Example, where have the students gone to? And lastly, the mood can be subjunctive. And that is number four. Uh, here it means it expresses conditionality, wish, hypothesis, supposition, proposal, and doubt. Example, if I lived in Ireland, then I would write a book. If I where in your position, I would never leave. Now, the lesson objectives. At the end of this lesson, learners will be able to do the following activities. One, define the subjunctive mood. Two, discover and state its link with the unlikely condition. Three, Formulate sentences with it as it relates to if clause type 2. And lastly, answer questions drawn on the topic. We shall continue with the lesson after this break. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, let's take a deep look at the subjunctive mood. Subjunctive mood means when the mood expresses uncertainty. It is when a sentence describes something that the writer is unsure about. That is, doubtful nature of the sentence. It allows a writer to express a demand, a suggestion, a wish, or even discuss a hypothetical situation. 
The mood is subjunctive because we use it to discuss situations and events uh, that we are not yet certain will happen. Example, the match might be cancelled due to rain. The subjunctive mode can be used mainly to show the following notions. First is counterfactual. Here, the writer expresses a notion contrary to a fact. Example, if I were you, I'd return it to the store. Second is imperative. Here, commands or demands I expressed. Example, I demanded that she walk away. Third is necessity. This refers to requirements. Example, it is necessary that she fill out the form first. Fourth is proposition. This applies to proposals and suggestions. Example, we proposed that they reconsider the offer. Fifth, the subjunctive mood also shows supposition. Here, it expresses a possibility. Example, if I were to accept the position, I'd have to relocate. And now the sixth notion is wish. This deals with an expression of desire. Example, I wish that I were able to go back and do it over again. Now, we want to look at the relationship of the subjunctive mood with the if clause type 2, which is also known as the unlikely condition. If clause type 2 sentences are always in the subjunctive mood. There are indicators to this. And they are as follows. One, if the verb in the sentence is followed by any of these main verbs, ask, demand, determine, insist, move, order, pray, prefer, recommend, regret, request, require, suggest, wish. We shall continue with these indicators after the break. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. Number two indicator is when if is followed by the verb to be. It is grammatically correct to use where, as we have in I were, you were, he, she, it were, we, you, they were. Three, for action verbs, the S in the third person is dropped. Example, John demands he complete the project. S is dropped in complete. Four, auxiliary verbs, would or should, are always used to support the main verbs in sentences. Like, 
we have in would like, should have. Five, should in conditional sentences is often used in the clauses expressing possibilities, suppositions, and many more. By using should in the if clause, we are suggesting that something is unlikely or not particularly probable. Example, should she arrive, ask her to wait. Six, happen can be used in place of should in the if clause. Example, if you happen to meet John, tell him that the meeting has been postponed. And if you should meet John, tell him that the meeting has been postponed. Seven, should and happen can be used together. Example, if you should happen to lose your job, what will you do? So far in this lesson, we have seen the subjunctive as one that begins with the if clause type two because of its interest majorly in hypothetical condition and its probable result. The aforementioned derives if I were which indicates an unreal situation, something that can never happen. More examples. I bet Tessie would be my friend if you were not around me. If I were more like Yemisi, I would have won the essay competition. Another example. I would vote for the senator if he were not accused of theft. Subjunctive also uses the following verb phrases. One, as it were. Two, wouldn't that it were. Three, be they one thing or another. And four, be that as it may. As expected, we have some extracts from the SSC English language past questions and answers booklet. Number 59 of 1997 says, I'd give up smoking if I were you. Number 52 of 1999 says, I wish Hazana were at the party yesterday. Number 56 of 2002 says, If I were your father, I would call the police. And number 56 of 2016 says, If he were here, he would do it for free. We have come to the end of the lesson for today. Thanks for your time and attention.